All right, we're rolling. So what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a, we've been trying to do this for a little bit, but Robert has a new turbine technology, I guess you would say. And he sent me a turbo with said turbine, and we're gonna talk about why it's different and better in many ways <laughs> to what exists and what we can expect. And the, I guess the goal for this turbo is I'm going to use it in the whole twin charge experiment. I would have loved to, and like opportunity came up once or twice, but it didn't work out where we were gonna A to B this with another, uh, we had like Mitch's Mustang with the 80 millimeter from you, and that would have been incredible, but that car got sold. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and then my friend Brett DeLong, I have been like, dude, you, you wanna go sevens? Cause he has a 7875 and he goes like 918 religiously on a good day. And I'm like, dude, you just want to skip, just want to skip eights. Skip a couple of steps, right? <laughs> you want to skip eights? And he's like, I'd have to do redo my hot side. And I'm like, I don't care what you're saying. Uh, let, I'm forcing this on you, but no, he's, he doesn't want to change it. So, uh, I think but it's hard to take apart a good run at nine second car. hundred percent, uh, difficult. I totally understand. And he's the kind of guy that his stuff is reliable and he does a good job. So it's hard to argue with Brett also. <laughs> if you're in a part of the country where the, 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 the weather's been cooperating this year, you've been able to do a lot of drag racing, you know, it's you know, down here. It's been, it's been just you know, hot, like, you know, like Texas does in the summer. So it's been kind of hard to get any good air days, uh, but it's changing now. So this is the time to go for sure. Yeah. It's just, they're going to head out again, uh, soon and be racing again. So yeah, redoing a turbo kit for him wasn't in the cards, but I think, uh, having the blower and other things on this six liter Fairmont that I'm putting together now is a good way to highlight the turbine having, you know, more I, I, I agree completely you know uh, i've wanted to uh, to twin charge something for a long time too and when i heard you say that you were you know you were interested in doing that i was like this is going to be great uh because we're going to get a lot of information about it right yeah. and it's going to be public information it's not just going to be one guy that did something and then it just kind of dies on the vine it'll be matt doing it and sharing it with everybody so everybody can see what works what doesn't work don't touch that wire is hot. You know, those sorts of, yes. you know, those sorts of things. About and Tom it. is on board also. So we're all gonna, you know, get some good input and, on and it. You know, now that, now that uh, you have a bigger engine now, that it's a six liter, it's even a greater, uh, a, a better example of showing, um, what the turbine wheel can do as far as unplugging, um, an S 400. Yes. You know, a lot of times we look at S 400s and we'll have the, we'll have the regular 96 by 88 millimeter turbine wheel. So 90, 96 millimeter here and 88 millimeter here and I, and I don't know why everybody insists on calling this a 96 millimeter turbine wheel when you know all the air has to go out the 88 millimeter part but that's a nomenclature thing that, that just really has kind of had multiple industry standards right some people like to talk about the choke diameter and some people like to talk about the I inlet. always like to say I the small people say hey Robert but you know that that guy's uh, that guy's uh, 82 is 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 uh, or that that guy's uh, that guy's uh, 96 it's bigger than yours because you said yours is a 92 millimeter and i'm like well mine's 92 millimeter here and his is 96 here his 96 is when it's 96 here it's 88 here so when i'm telling you i've got a 92 millimeter I'm, it's 99 by 92 I'm, I'm using the actual choke diameter instead of the inlet diameter uh people get you know uh, you don't understand the whole story sometimes if if you don't understand what the specs are in the name of the turbo right so people go oh, i've got yeah. a at 88103 or something like that. Usually when they say that, they don't mean that they have a 103 millimeter x deucer, but that's kind of what your brain is thinking they mean. They have a, you know, with the second set of numbers in the turbo name is often used to describe the turbine wheel. Um, and in the case of this model we're talking about today, uh, 88S is the, the term used to describe the turbine wheel in that. So yeah, I agree, same thing. I re-educate people all the time. I'm like, guys, yeah. it's- Are you talking about this? diameter part or this part i always you know, say because, i'm like you, you, 
87 by 82, 96 by 88, 99 by 92. Yeah, these are the typical sizes that you see for S400. Uh, but sometimes people think that this number being so large means the turbine wheel is really large. No, all of the numbers are really large if you're looking at the inducer number. So, you know, I've had people that say, uh, well, I've got, you know, you're, I've got so-and-so's and, and, and theirs, is a, theirs is a 96. I didn't get yours because you said yours was a 92. I said, yeah, but mine's 92 where the 96 is 88. And I know there's a lot of numbers. That's like number salad there. But if you think about it, you know, you, you see my point. You have a 99 by 92 turbine wheel and you have an 86 by 88 turbine wheel. And if you're comparing the 96 part of the small one to the 92 part of the big one, then you might be thinking that you've got the right one. That you know which one's larger, but you don't always know which one's larger. You need to be clear about those specs. Yeah. And on the 88 uh, S turbine wheel, this is Zona Rotors turbine wheel for the S400 that we're going to be using in these models, the, the HD8588 S's. S is the number in the model that designates that the turbine has the UHF splitter from Zona Rotor. And this is an official Zona Rotor turbine wheel. Um, and it's a, it's a six by six. So you get, you get 12, you get 12 inducer uh, blades. Okay. And you, Technically, you get twelve exducer uh, blades too in the turbo wheel, but some of them are some of them are high and some of them are low. So when it comes to the choke diameter of the turbo wheel, this eighty-eight millimeter part, you have a lot less blade blockage in that eighty-eight millimeter diameter. So the choke flow rate of of the turbine housing goes up, turbine wheel goes up a lot. Uh, it also drops the inertia a little bit. Uh, on the turbo wheel, and it favors the turbo for higher shaft speeds. So, uh, what you could do with this typically is you'll you'll operate a little bit higher shaft speed, have a have a larger overall mass flow rate, and uh, typically you'll end up with a better speed match between your compressor and what would have been your overloaded turbine wheel, which is no longer overloaded anymore. Yeah. Uh, like in uh, in a case you've got uh, like a buddy of mine, Chris Boyette, has got a, a S2000 with a uh, with an LT head engine on it, and that thing will run 30 pounds of boost with 27 pounds of back pressure, um, and that's an 8588, and that's kind of unusual. A lot of times uh, you look at a regular S400 with an 85 millimeter wheel or an 80 millimeter wheel. By the time they're running 30 pounds of boost, they've got 35 or 40 pounds of back pressure. Yeah. So uh, you can see just from that one example that uh, that the turbine really does increase the flow a lot. You've just you've probably never seen anything really like this before. No, uh, do you have another one you could show us? In, um, could you uh, show uh, us like the regular one? Could you show us like the regular one versus that one? Oh yeah, totally different. Okay, so uh, so we have twelve total blades here with you know twelve inlet paddles and paddles blades. You know, paddle is an easy way to think about it. But the original Borg Warner one is uh, what is that ten blade? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Yeah, so ten. So so you have you have ten ten choking blades in the minor diameter of the turbine housing that all the air has to go through. So you have ten there. In this case, you have six blocking yeah. that choked area. Okay, yeah. so way more flow through the choke area of the turbine housing mm -hmm. at the outlet with this blade than the original 96. Yeah, visually blade. incredible okay. difference what there. About, what about this? Well, hey, wow, if you're letting all the air out, how are you getting power out of it? Well, you add two more inducers. So, so, so you get all your drive torque is when the air hits you know, the inducer. Okay. That, that, that is, that's how you get shaft acceleration. That is how you get drive torque is by, you know, putting a force at a radius distance from the center of the shaft. So when the air comes in and hits the paddle, that's how you get shaft acceleration. So, uh, you know, having 12 instead of 10 means you can get better shaft acceleration. Huh. Okay. Having six choking blades at the exducer instead of 10 means you get better choke flow rate at the top end. So what do you get with this turbine wheel versus this turbine wheel is a much wider operating range for the turbine wheel that is happy in. That is, it's like, oh, really glad we're doing this right now. Oh, I'm really glad we're doing this too. Oh, glad we're doing that also. I'm glad about all these things you're doing with the turbo. Whereas otherwise with the standard turbo wheel, like, great, we might, we might do, we do, do uh, one sort of operation really well, but it's a little bit, you know, under as far as shaft acceleration. And it's a little bit choky as far as top end goes, but it works really good in the mid range. But you can have both with the Zone Rotor UHF. And that's what we've got in the HD 85 88S models that we're talking about today. So that's what this guy is right here. That's that's the turbo you've got right there for your uh, for your six liter Fairmont project. And uh, we're gonna make a we're gonna make a sloppy specific discount code for those turbochargers too. Oh, exciting! We do a 10 off code for that. It will, we'll, uh, 
we'll add it in here, and then uh, you could use that on the website to uh, to get ten percent off on a turbocharger. Nice. You want to call it uh, sloppy ten or Fairmont ten or sloppy sloppy Mont or what do you want to call it? <laughs> no. we'll go sloppy ten. That's good. So sloppy ten. I was trying. I can't think of anything off of this turbocharger on the FP website. I can't think of anything super exciting. Yeah. So you beat me on so all that the rest one. The guys can check one out too and get a good deal on. Yeah, so that's incredible. I didn't know all of that. Uh, it's interesting. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna flip it over. This pig. Yeah, it is cool to see how different that is. Looking at the side of the turbo, you didn't even get what's special about it. So, so no, you yeah. Don't have to tell everybody that you have something special. You can just run it. <laughs> yeah, is that now UHF probably means like ultra high flow or something it like does. that? It's an acronym for an ultra high flow, and that's a that's a zone rotor trademark. Look at that, I'm smart. You have some people starting to use it somewhere and they're gonna they're gonna end up getting some letters here pretty soon, but Oh boy. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. And uh yeah, I figured the same thing and then also who really does it? Who does the twin charge, the compound twin charging? And then who does it and shares information, good or bad, and then you know, who would be willing to change a majority of the setup between Tom fabricating uh, me facilitating, you know, the dyno and everything, and you maybe changing turbo stuff also. So it's a great, uh, you know, organization here to, to to have some sort of hopeful success. But I think it would be really neat to see, like, low boost on this and low boost on the blower. Uh, because, yeah, it doesn't seem like really anybody yeah, yeah, does I mean, it. Yeah, there's no shortage of different comparisons you can make throughout this uh, this. This uh, this project, you know, uh, you you could you could just blow or just turbo, uh, blower and turbo, low boost, high boost, uh, comparisons between the two, uh, back pressure analysis between the two. What ends up doing more work, you know? I love the idea of sending already dense charged air to the blower inlet. Yeah, uh, it's a cool idea, and uh, there's there's a lot of great reasons to do that. Uh, and, and you know, if you think about like cars that already have a blower on them from the factory, like maybe you got a CTSV or, or uh, yeah, the you know, old uh, GT40 guys, GT500, like the turbo kits that uh, I know that usually the blower itself is usually pretty small, and then that ends up being a restriction, and or people just end up going you know big turbo and foregoing the, the blower side. But it's interesting to see uh, both on there for sure. Well, you make your blower a lot bigger when the inlet conditions for the air on the blower are already one bar above ambient. Yeah. So, so when you are, you know, so the blower is uh, like a displacement blower, like an LSA, it's going to take whatever is, is at the inlet and it's going to, you know, pump uh, 1.7 liters of that per revolution into the motor. So if that's just zero PSI ambient pressure, well then great, that's what it can do. But if it's inhaling 14 PSI, guess what, man? We just we just compressed 14 PSI into 25 PSI just with the belt. And then, and also, you know, while you're while you're waiting for the turbo to come on or you're waiting for the converter to work or anything like that, you got your blower power just sitting there, you know, cuz yeah. it's already related. So uh, you know, and, and your 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 blower is is a uh, centripetal blower, so it doesn't have the displacement aspect to it. But the functionality is going to be you know very much the same as far as you know since it's gear driven, since it's driven from the crankshaft. So it's very engine speed related uh, rather than airflow related. Yeah, yeah, and I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see also because that gives me like that 500 horsepower stab almost immediately into the 500s instead of the two, what, 275, 350 horsepower, you know, motor with turbo manifolds in it, you know, because they get choked down a little bit once you hang the turbo stuff till it uh, yeah, crosses yeah, the border. Yeah, off your NA power until it comes into about five pounds or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, because that's what people uh, often get upset when we do like a really low, like I love springing cars for like two pounds and then just using the boost control uh, for a lot of reasons. And a lot of times people on like two to five pounds are like, wow, where's, why am I still in the 400s, you know? Yeah, why is it, why did it not just make 800 horsepower? And I'm like, well, uh, It's kind of in the way still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, we get up there. You'll be okay, yeah. trust me, you'll be okay. But yeah, very, very cool. Uh, I've had this, unfortunately, I've had this thing so long, we just haven't been able to line it up. Uh, and kind of, you know, I haven't been able to use it either, so... Uh, it hasn't really been worth like, hey, I have this thing and it's going to sit for months. Right. So right. I'm hoping, 
Uh, Way less interesting. I would like to drive my car a little bit, and then in winter tear it down, and Tom and I are going to do like the whole front end, the turbo kit, the, you know, we're going to, maybe we're going to do, we even consider doing like twin intercool, like intercool the blower before the engine again, like, you know, stack and intercoolers on the front end or some crazy stuff. I'm sure we'll think of 50 ideas mm-hmm. uh, before we do it. And, you know, maybe some of them will. If, you know, if your first stage of intercooling is, you know, one bar, then, um, then you wouldn't necessarily have to have interstage intercooling. You know, it's not going to be. That's what you were saying. We don't have to make it super complex at first. Right. And I agree too. Uh, And also, it was really nice to see that that blower was very efficient with its outlet temperatures. So, me sending even colder intercooled turbo air into it would already be basically intercooling it with both of them on. You know, under right. 14 pounds, I don't think the temperature is going to go anywhere near above what the intercool blower setup would anyway. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, it, and if that if that blower is receiving, like I said, you know, 10 or 14 pounds of boost and it's operating at a 2 to 1 pressure ratio at, at the shaft speed it was at, then that's great because the 2 to 1 pressure ratio of 14 pounds inlet means what? 18, 28 pounds of, uh, of discharge pressure. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's going to be very easy to hit high boost, you know, with, with both of these, with both chargers working not super hard, Yeah. you know. So, but you're going to be able to run, you know, 30 pounds of boost. And I, you know, I dare guess how low the back pressure is going to be. I mean, you could end up with back pressure that could be like 10 pounds, 12 More. pounds of back pressure, but, you know, have 30 pounds of boost. Yeah, I will be logging it, so we will all know. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, I mean, that you covered a massive amount of info and I learned, uh, I thought I knew uh, some stuff on this and I learned more already. So incredible. Well, happy and to talk about it. And if anybody has any other questions or wants to, uh, you know, discuss it with me further, uh, I do a pretty good job of keeping up with my private messages on Facebook. That's a good place to send me a question and just say, Hey, Robert, I- uh, what do you think about this? You know, uh, I, I usually almost uh, usually have time to answer some of those. Oh yeah, I would say I like easily. to try to do that. It's kind of fun for me. Sometimes, sometimes I'll answer somebody at ten o'clock at night, and they're like, "Wow, what are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm just answering your questions, Chief. Why are you complaining?" <laughs> yeah, I just, I just had some time, man. I figured I'd, I'd talk about turbos. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. I would say if anybody has questions, you can ask below. You can ask Robert. You can email Robert. You can. I'll put all your links to your things in the comments. Uh, otherwise, it is forced performance. If we, you know, if we weren't sure already, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right there, FP Robert Young. So uh, that's basically it. I'm happy to uh, share it with you and uh, share for everybody else and show off the new turbine. And I, uh, I'm sure. Uh, well, you you've already tested great results, but it'll be neat to see uh, real world also. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. All right. Well. All right, well, thanks a bunch. Thanks for a chance to talk about it. I sure appreciate it. Y'all boost on. Yep. (laughs) Thanks.